Making a custom linear profile for your camera is easy. First, you need the Adobe DNG Profile Editor, which you can download at the link in the description. Just scroll down the page and select your operating system. This is a nice standalone piece of software from the good people at Adobe, made before the company was apparently taken over by the devil. It's basically a LUT editor, and if you've seen my color correction video, you know how I feel about LUTs. This software doesn't require installation. It's just a standalone executable that you run, and it doesn't even talk to any other Adobe software. So it isn't going to invalidate your Munkaroos setup if you're worried about that. It does scan for existing profiles inside of Adobe Camera Raw though, so be careful about that since it might confuse you later on. You will also need some kind of software to convert a RAW file to Adobe's DNG format. I'm just using Lightroom for this, but Adobe does have a standalone DNG converter. I have here five examples of RAW files from various cameras. One file from my Panasonic GH4, one from my quadcopter, and three from my friend Gunth's Sony Xperia phone. You only need one example photo per camera to build a profile for that camera, and the photo doesn't actually matter. Later in the video, you'll see why I have three different Sony phone photos. But, the basic process to make a linear camera profile is extremely simple. First, open the Adobe DNG editor, then I'll go to File, Open DNG Image, and I'll select the photo I took with my quadcopter. The two panels we care about in the software are the color tables and tone curve. There are more advanced things you can do here, like building your own super crazy accurate color tables using a color chart, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. All you need to do to make a linear profile is open the Tone Curve tab, then in the Base Tone Curve drop-down, select Linear. Now in the Color Tables tab, you might have other options here. Most cameras will have an embedded color profile at minimum. Ideally, you want to set this to Adobe Standard if you have the option. I'll talk more about this later in the video, but for now, all you need to do is go to File and Export the Profile. Give it a good name so you know what it is. You can also name it in the Options tab of the software. If you do use the Options tab, then that will be the name that shows up in Camera Raw and not what your file name is. But I'll just call this one DJI underscore Linear. So that's it. Now you need to install the profile so you can actually use it. On Windows, you put these inside the following folder. Users, your username, App Data, Roaming, Adobe, Camera Raw, Camera Profiles. As long as the DCP files are inside of this camera profiles folder, it will work. On Mac OS, it's slash users slash your username, library, application support, Adobe, camera raw, camera profiles. The library folder is hidden by default, so use Spotlight Search to go there directly. You could also just do this in Lightroom by clicking File, then select Import Develop Profiles and Presets, then select your DCP files. This just copies them to the Camera Raw folder automatically. Next, restart Lightroom, or whatever Camera Raw software you're running, and then when you open it back up, you are going to see no difference. First, you got to click on the profile and go to Browse. There will probably be a bunch of Adobe ones, but you should have the custom one you just made in this list somewhere. Click on it to select it, and if you click the little star to add it to favorites, it will always show up in the drop-down list for that specific camera. That's all the basics, but the video isn't over. I have a lot more to explain. You will notice four of my RAW files are actually DNG files. However, even though DNG is an open standard and all DNG files should function the same way, they don't! Let me open up the DNG editor and I'll show you what I mean. I'll open one of these Sony DNGs, and in the Color Tables tab, you'll notice once again that the only option I have is the embedded color profile. But what if I don't want whatever Sony has decided my colors should be? This is where re-exporting as a proper, standard Adobe DNG comes in handy. You will also need to do this for any non-DNG RAW files, like my GH4's RW2 files. I'll select all five of my images in Lightroom, right-click, Export, Export to DNG. I'll select the same folder that they're in and I'll tell it to use unique names so it doesn't overwrite my original files. Now I'll relaunch the DNG Profile Editor, and I'll open one of these newly exported DNG files. In the Color Table drop-down, you will now see I have two options, the Adobe Standard Color and the Sony Color, which is the color that Sony applies to your photos by default on this camera which you may want sometimes, and sometimes you may want normal Adobe color. Remember, this is all just color related. You still gotta set it to linear in the tone curve panel if you want a linear profile. So what I like to do is I'll export two linear camera profiles, one for Sony color and one for Adobe color. I'll just export one, change the color table, then export the other one. Make sure you close out the program after you do this, because if you go and open another DNG, the software will let you select color profiles from the files you previously had open, which can be kind of cool sometimes, but it probably isn't going to give you accurate colors. 
Let me reopen the DNG editor and I'll show you another cool thing using my GH4's RAW file. Now in my color profiles, I have a ton of options. These are all color mode settings that my camera has, except for Adobe Standard. I only shoot in natural color mode on my camera, but the monochrome profile does a pretty good job. So I'm going to export a linear profile for all three of these profiles. One for Adobe Standard, one for my GH4's monochrome mode, and one for my GH4's natural color mode. My GH4's other color modes are irrelevant to me, but you might want them for your camera. Once again, I'll go over to the tone curve. You can click this button down here to show the actual tone curve, and you'll see that the base profile is what Adobe Color does to your image by default. But my GH4 actually has its own unique tone curve, and if I wanted that instead of the linear profile, I could export it as its own profile too. And sure, why not? I'll call this one GH4 Natural Curve. Then I'll go and make the remaining linear profiles for each of the three color profiles that I want. Now back in Lightroom, after importing these newly made profiles and doing another restart, I'll select my GH4 image and then browse for my profiles. And you can see they're all here. Going over to the Sony image, you can see the two profiles too. The linear standard color and the linear Sony color. But watch what happens when I click on one of these other images from the Sony Xperia. Where are my profiles? So this is something you've got to be wary of with modern phones, because if you didn't know, the Xperia 5 Mark II actually has three separate cameras the telephoto, the wide, and the ultra-wide. And you must create linear profiles for each of them, since they are, in fact, three completely different cameras. I need to make a total of six profiles since I want my Sony and standard color for each camera of the phone. And this is why I have three different photos from the Sony phone. One last thing I'll point out is the quadcopter DNG. Remember how I re-exported the Sony RAWs as DNG again and it allowed me to access Adobe Standard Color in my profile editor? Well, if I open the newly exported DNG for the quadcopter, you'll see I still don't get the option. That's because certain cameras just don't support that. But you could force it by opening another DNG, then opening the one you want to make a profile for, and it should allow you to access color profiles from the first DNG. But as I previously said, you shouldn't actually do that since it's going to give you weird results, but maybe you might want that for artistic purposes. And that's pretty much it. You should now be able to follow this video and make a linear profile, or really any kind of custom profile, for any camera that shoots RAW. As long as you can convert the file to DNG, you can make custom profiles using this tool. Hopefully you found this helpful, and if you did, please subscribe, because even though this isn't a photography channel, I do make photography videos occasionally. If you want to check out my cool photos, go follow me on Instagram too.